Okay, great. Uh, thanks, everybody, for making it out. And thanks to Ava for agreeing to give a talk on such uh, short notice. Um, so today we have our own Ava Sparka, who will be talking about a counterexample to a conjecture of Erdős. Go ahead and take this away. OK, so as you can see, this is a joint work with Laszlo and Ina, who graduated last year. And let's just start with this. So a bunch of people, I'm pretty sure the list that I put up is not complete, have shown that the connected graphs uh, on n vertices and minimum degree delta have a diameter at most 3n over delta plus 1 plus big O1 as n goes to infinity. And that big O1 term actually, if I remember correctly, can be uh, changed to maybe minus 1. So, and this is actually sharp. Here is an example. Basically, what happens is that you have a bunch of complete graphs. Uh, if you look at the number, it's roughly equally distributed. Uh, delta plus one vertices are roughly equally distributed between three consecutive uh, clumps of complete graphs here. And between two consecutive clumps, all vertices are present, except at the end, you may want to blow out the first and the last clump. So the minimum degree condition is satisfied. And if you compute everything out, this is an example that this can be achieved, this diameter can be achieved. And actually, I'm not going to show the example because it's slightly more complicated. Cochetta and Smith, apologies if I mispronounce these names. This bound above is sharp even for delta regular graphs. So, uh, Erdős, Pach, Polak, and Tusa uh, came up with the idea of, well, let's add something extra uh, besides the uh, minimum degree and the uh, number of vertices in the graph. And uh, they said, let's, for, uh, for, uh, let's forbid uh, complete graphs of a certain uh, size of slab graph. So there are two parts of the conjecture. If you have a graph that is k2r plus 3 and 3r minus 1 divides delta, then as n goes to infinity, the diameter is at most 3r minus 1 over r times n over delta plus big O1. And I am rewriting it for reasons that will become clear later as 3 minus 2 over 2r n over delta. So 3 minus 2 over the maximum possible click size within the graph. They have came up an example that shows that this is actually sharp. And this, now the clumps that I have are sets of independent vertices. There are R clumps in a layer or column. And uh, each uh, <clears throat> clump has size delta over 3R minus 1. Since 3R minus 1 divides delta, this is an integer. This is why we need that condition. And within a layer and between every two consecutive layer, every edges are present except within the clump. And once again, at the end, you might want to blow up some of the clumps to make sure that at the end, the minimum degree condition are satisfied. So first of all, uh, because you can only find a complete graph within two consecutive layers, because edges are present between two consecutive layers, but they are not present between layers that are further away. Uh, and the uh, edges are uh, only there between clumps, and there are two R clumps within uh, two consecutive layers. The maximum click size in this graph is uh, two R, so it's a K two R plus one free graph. If you take a vertex, it is adjacent to ev every vertex in different clumps in its own layer and in, uh, to all clumps in the other two layers. So there are three R minus one clumps into which it's adjacent to vertices to each containing delta over three R minus one vertices. So the vertex has degree delta indeed. And the number of vertices is D times R delta over three R minus one plus constant times delta. Uh, the diameter is D. There are R clumps in every layer, each containing delta over three R minus one vertices. And you know, uh, the little magic we do at the end and the fact that there is one more uh, layer gives us some constant time delta vertices. And that actually gives us that this uh, graph achieves the upper bound that we need. So the conjecture that I showed you, if true, is sharp. Now, if G is uh, K2R3, 
and my condition on the divisibility condition changed to r minus one times three r minus one divides delta. Then as n goes to infinity, the diameter of G is at most this quantity. Let me not even read it out. You can read it. And here is the example that shows this as uh, sharp. Now you have r and r plus one clumps, r and r minus one clumps in the consecutive layers or columns. Uh, Clump size in the R clump is R delta over R minus one, three R plus two. And in the R minus one clumps is R plus one delta R minus one, three R plus two. Two consecutive layers contains two R minus one clumps. So it's a K two R three graph. And you know, with a bit more work that I'm not going to show because it's just algebra, you can show that this is indeed a graph of minimum degree delta. And the diameter is achieves what it needs to achieve. And just for comparison, that little constant can be written as three minus two over two R minus one. So three minus two over maximum allowed click size minus a teeny bit more and over delta plus big over. Now I would like to note here that we have the condition R delta bigger than equal to two. So we are talking about uh, graphs that are K four or K six free. So we are not talking about triangle free graphs here, but what would correspond to triangle free graphs in the uh, part A, actually that uh, inequality has been shown and proven to be true by the same uh, collection of people. So in summary, Erdős, Pak, Polak and Tusa conjectured that if you forbid a complete graph of size K plus one, or sorry, order k plus one, uh, the diameter can be at most three minus two over k times n over delta plus big O one as n goes to infinity. In fact, a bit less when k is odd. And we have a lower bound on delta in this conjecture that comes from the divisibility condition. And they proved the corresponding version of the conjecture for triangle free graphs. Now we know that the diameter of any connected graph is at most three n times the three n over delta plus one. So if you want any improvement over this with or additional condition that is of the form C times N over Delta, the constant C has to be strictly less than three. Also, as this is even true for regular connected graphs uh, and Delta regular graphs are K Delta plus from three for any improvement, we need the Delta to be bigger than K minus two. And for this particular upper bound to be an improvement, we need that delta should be at least 3k over two. So we need to have some lower bound on delta, just not necessarily the one that, that we have up there. So not much, in, not much progress has been made on this conjecture. And Peter and Ankerman, that we, with whom we work in South Africa, suggested to try to work on this, but uh, change the condition that says that, oh, you can have a click of size at most k here to the weekend condition that our graph is k colorable. And uh, if we change the condition uh, in, change the size of the maximum click to the colorability condition, the conjecture remains sharp if it's true, because the examples are uh, k colorable. And we have actually managed to prove uh, the conjecture for four colorable graphs. So if you have a four colorable graphs of order n and minimum degree delta, the diameter is at most five half n over delta minus one, which is exactly of the form <coughs> that the conjecture suggests. And our proof uses inclusion exclusion and the partitioning of the graph according to coloration patterns in the distance classes. And let me show you the structure that we can impose on the graph, which helps us with the proof. I'm not going to show you this proof. I'm going to show you something else, but I still need this clump graphs here. So first of all, for the problem that we are considering, it's enough to consider K color graphs with minimum degree, at least delta that are edge maximal in the sense that if you, if I insert any edge, either the diameter decreases or the chromatic number increases above K. We start from a vertex V of maximum eccentricity, fix the K coloration, and we use LI for the set of vertices that are at distance I from V. 
because we have edge maximality, two vertices are adjacent in this structure precisely when they differ in color and they are either in the same uh, distance class or in distance classes that are one apart. We are going to contract vertices in the same distance class and the same color into a single weighted vertex. And the weight is going to be the number of vertices in the original graph. And the, the resulting weighted graph structure is going to be the clump graph. And if we are given a weighted clump graph, we can recover the graph that it comes from. Now, in particular, if we have a clump graph where every two consecutive colors have at most k vertices, the graph is k colorable. That's not the not a necessary, not a sufficient but a necessary condition, and sometimes it is helpful. So let's use clump graphs to describe uh, graphs now. So first, I want to concentrate on the free colorable case of so the k for free graphs. When two divides delta, delta is even, I'm going to consider this little gadget here. So it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers. I have uh, the number of clumps I have is one, two, one, 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 two, one. It's kind of a symmetric structure. The first, the third, and the last clump has a single vertex. The third and the fifth clump has delta over two, and the second and the penultimate clump has delta over two and delta over two minus one vertices per clump. I and what we are going to do, we are going to repeat these blocks some p times. And in the first and the last block, I'm going to make a little change, namely, then in the first of uh, first clump, the second. Uh, uh, in the second column, this delta over two minus one changes to delta over two. And in the last column, uh, the penultimate column, in the penultimate column in the delta over two minus one uh, clump is going to change to delta over two. I claim that this graph is free colorable and has minimum degree delta. The free colorable is obvious because if you look at the structure, the number of clumps in any two consecutive layers is at most three. So that's fine. What about the degree condition? It's enough to check in the first half because the graph is symmetric. Uh, the middle vertex, if you look at the middle vertex, it has two clumps of size delta over two as neighbors. So the total number of neighbors is delta two times delta over two, which is delta. If you look at the third layer, the delta over two clump, it, the number of neighbors is one plus delta over two plus delta over two minus one, which is delta. If you look at the, say the size delta over two clump uh, in the second column, the number of neighbors is one plus delta over two plus delta over two minus one, which is delta. And the other guy has one more neighbor, so that's fine. If you look at the first, uh, layer, there is this little one. The number of uh, neighbors is delta over two plus delta over two minus one plus one because it's adjacent to the previous guy, which is delta. Or if it's the first clump, then both of those uh, neighbors are size delta over two. So the minimum degree is delta. So this is indeed a graph that is free colorable and has minimum degree delta over two. The number of vertices, well, I repeat the block p times. So p times the number of vertices in the block. And that's n minus 2 because the first and the last column, has, first and the last block has an extra vertex added. And the diameter is p times the number of columns in this block minus 1. Well, so the diameter is n minus 2 times the number of columns divided by the number of vertices in the block minus 1. And if you compute everything out, that's 7n over de 3 delta plus 1 plus big O1. And if you want a constant there that works for every delta, that's actually 7 third n over delta. So the diameter is 7 third n over delta, which is 3 minus 2 third n over delta plus big O1. 
And as delta increases, this is the best constant we can put here. So this is sharp. And this is bigger. This constant is bigger than the one in the erdős bach polaktus conjecture. And in fact, if we drop the condition that 2 divides delta, I can modify my formulas. It gives the same thing for even delta. So it works with odd delta and the same numbers work out. I'm not going to go through in five tooth bump. I hope you believe me that this works out. So the problem here is that A, when delta is big enough, this is going to be a larger diameter than the upper band allows us for in the erdős bach polach to the conjecture. In fact, if we just look at the 7n over 3 delta plus 1 number, it's going to be bigger than the n over delta times the erdős bach polach to the conjecture when delta is bigger than 16. So for moderately large delta, the erdős bach polach to the conjecture fails in the free callable case. So what happens if we try to look at larger numbers because you know it just might be a fluke because we have a small number. So odd colorable case, K2R free. If the same thing would work out, we would have some blocks repeated P times, make little magic at the two ends to make sure that the additional edge that we have lost there doesn't drop or minimum degree below what we needed. And we would have something like this, n minus two, assuming that only two vertices are enough to make the fudging equals to p times the number of vertices in the block. The diameter is p times the number of colors, uh, columns minus one. And the diameter is number of columns divided by number of vertices times n plus big O one. And it's going to be number of columns divided by how many times delta fits into the number of vertices. That's our constant. So what can we do with this? Well, the next case that we can consider is the five callable case. I'm going to show you the structure we found just when four divides delta because that's easy. So five callable case corresponds to r equals to three. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Harum hot. 13 uh, columns. And this is the pattern. Ev the first, uh, every third column has a single vertex. So a single color, single vertex. Between two of these, I have clumps of size delta over four. And the two columns in total has five clumps. The difference is that. Oh, the total is five clumps. In the first uh, column, I have four clumps, second two, so three, then two, then one. So four, three, two, one in the first column of these two consecutive columns and one, two, three, four in the second column. And if you look around, you can see that the minimum degree is delta. And oh, because in two consecutive columns, the sum of the number of clumps is five. It's a five colorable graph. And because I have 13 columns and five delta plus three vertices, the diameter of this graph is 13 and over five delta plus three plus big O one, which is 13 over five times N over delta plus big O one. If you want a constant that works with every delta in front of the N over delta, and that is three minus two over five. There is no little extra there. So even in the five corridor, which is the K uh, six three Ks, if delta is big enough, this beats the erdős bach polach to the conjecture. And uh, in the general case, the two R minus one colorable, the K two R three, I'm going to show you a block that has six R minus five columns and two R minus one delta plus two R minus three vertices which will give you the three minus two over two R minus one times N over delta upper bound. And you can't put any 
constant that's better than this in front of the n over delta because the construction has diameter 6r minus 5n over 2r minus 1 delta plus 2r minus 3 vertices. And this is going to be a counterexample to the original conjecture for this case. When delta is big enough, big enough means that it's bigger than 2 times r minus 1 times 3r plus 2 plus 2r minus 3. So how does this counterexample looks like? Let's start with the case when 2r minus 2 divides delta. I will have 6r minus 5 columns, and the number of columns in the columns is going to be 1, and then every third one is going to be 1, the number of columns. Between two consecutive of these black ones, there are going to be two columns where the total number of columns is 2r minus 2. And the size of the first clump is 2r minus 2, 2r minus t, 2r minus 4, 2r minus 5, and so on, until it goes down to 1. And the other one goes up because the, the sum of those two numbers is always 2r minus 1. This is a 2r minus 1 colorable graph because the sum of any two consecutive uh, columns, the number of columns, uh, is two, at most 2r minus 1. There are 6r minus uh, 5 colors, uh, columns. Uh, I'm giving you just the numbers that are not necessarily one, but this is the same thing as I have up there. And all edges within a layer and between the consecutive layers are there because the number of clumps work out just fine. So what is the size of the clumps? In the black singleton columns, you have a singleton vertex. So that's just one vertex. In the red and the blue columns, every clump has size delta over 2r minus 2, which is an integer according to our divisibility condition. And this is what we have in a picture. This is an example of r equals to 6. Now, these little um, rectangles are there because I'm subtracting one there to make everything tidy. But let's think about what's happening here. Let's pick a vertex that has, uh, excuse me, you do see my uh, um, arrow, right? Yeah, we can see it. OK, good, because otherwise I'm talking about stuff and you don't know what I'm talking about. Let's pick one of these singleton vertices in a layer. It has exactly uh, <clears throat> 2 r minus 1 clumps as neighbors in the two neighboring uh, 2r minus 2, sorry, in the two neighboring uh, layers. Each has size delta over 2r minus 2, so the degree is delta here. Except here, when I have this little minus 1, if I'm not at the end, but then I have a one extra neighbor here. So the singleton columns have, uh, the vertices in the singleton column have degrees delta. If I pick any vertex, in these two consecutive columns. Well, in the two consecutive columns, I have 2r minus 1 clumps. So that guy has 2r minus 2 neighbors amongst the clumps, each size delta over 2r minus 2. That's degree delta. And uh, except, you know, if I manage to pick somebody here where I took off one, but even in that case, they have one extra neighbor either on the left on the, or the right. So the minimum degree is delta. Everything works out here. What's the difference when 2r minus 2 doesn't divide delta? Everything is the same, except when I'm talking about the clump sizes, the delta over 2r minus 2 doesn't work out to be an integer. I have to make it an integer, so I have to put in some floors and ceilings. And if I tell you in every columns how many of the ceilings I put in, the rest of them are going to be floors. I have pretty much described you everything that's going on. And in order to do that, I'm going to say that D is going to be the remainder when I divide delta with 2r minus 2, because that's what I need to figure out. Everything worked out in the divisibility case. So I just need to make sure that uh, when I put in these ceilings, the number of neighbors that, get, that gets a little extra plus one from the ceilings for every vertex is going to be at least D. And the ceiling numbers are symmetric, so I'm going to describe what happens in the first half, and then you just have to 
flip it around for the second half. So in the blue layers in the first half, I'm going to put in D minus one ceilings as long as they fit. If they no longer fit because the number of uh, vertices that I have in the column is less than D minus one, I make all of them ceilings. In the red columns, I'm going to look at not the previous blue, but the next blue guy. And I look at how many uh, ceilings I put there. And I just put enough many ceilings uh, in this red column so that the total number of ceilings surrounding this single black ones is exactly D. So it's D minus the whatever many I put in the next blue guy. Except in the very middle, and I'm going to show you what happens there. In the very middle, in the two columns, I put D over two floor and D over two ceiling, many ceilings on those D over two, delta over two R minus two numbers. So why does this work out? Well, you might have noticed that I put D minus one in the first three here. That's simply because D is the remainder. So it just works out that D minus one fits into the first three, no matter what you are doing. I have selected my numbers in such a way that if you select one of these singleton vertices, the number of ceilings in the two neighboring columns is exactly D. And therefore, everything works out for those guys except maybe for the first one, but then I have D minus one ceilings here and I have an extra neighbor on the side if it's not at the end. And I have a little plus one somewhere one on one of these if it's at the end. So the singleton vertices have degree at least delta. If I pick a vertex in these two consecutive columns of bigger clump size, well, the ceiling numbers have been chosen in such a way that in two consecutive columns, I have at least D, sometimes D plus one uh, ceilings. So if I'm unlucky and I pick a vertex that comes from a column that has ceiling on, that comes from a column that has ceiling on it, even that vertex is still has at least D minus one many ceilings, uh, with uh, clumps with ceilings in their size in their neighborhood. D minus one is not enough, but to the left or to the right, depending upon from which column I pick this vertex, I still have an extra vertex. So everything works out fine. This is a graph with minimum degree, at least delta, which is two R minus one, uh, one colorable. And as the numbers work out the way I said, this is a counter example to the erdős pak polák to the conjecture. So this gives us the following update to the conjecture. For every k bigger than or equal to zero, if delta is at least three k over two and g is a k sub k plus one free graph or a weak compression k colorable graph or order of order n and minimum degree delta, then the diameter of g is that most three minus two over k times n over delta plus big O one. And or examples give that this conjecture is best possible. So let's uh, think this over a little bit more carefully. If delta is smaller than three K over two, then the known and sharp three N over delta plus one upper bound on the diameter is better than this number. So we can't conjecture this for small L delta. When k is even and 3r minus 1 divides delta, then this conjecture is the same as the erdős pak polak and their construction shows that this is best possible. If the divisibility condition doesn't hold, then well, we try the same sort of conjecture for the even uh, k, and uh, that gives the exact same upper bound, but not sharp because I have a constant times delta plus another constant as before. So uh, this constant is the best that works for the, in the form C times N over delta. And I suspect that you could do the same thing with their conjecture. So this con uh, conjecture is the best possible for K even if you want the upper bound in the form C times N over delta. When K is odd, then our construction shows that this is best, this is best possible that, that works for all delta simultaneously in this form, but because what we have uh, is not exactly in this form, or example is not exactly this form in the diameter, it's uh, it has that sometimes delta plus 
something times delta plus another constant there. The erdős pappolák to the conjecture may still be true in a certain range of delta. It's me, because it gives us a be better construction and we don't have something that uh, says that the erdős pappolák to the conjecture cannot be true. We don't have an example like that. So I promise you that I can at least give you some upper bound uh, when I change the uh, condition from or oh, maximum click size is not bigger than k to k colorability. So I'm going to use clump graphs for that. We consider the edge maximum graph, we fix a k coloration, a vertex of maximum eccentricity. L i is the set of vertices at distance i from v. So I have L0 up till L d, where d is the diameter. The clump graph is defined by replacing vertices of the same color with a single vertex and uh, with the vertex with the number of vertices that I put together. I'm going to denote by CI the number of colors used in LI in the K coloration of the original graph, which is the same as the number of vertices in the clump graph. And by little LI, the number of vertices in LI in the original graph, uh, which is the uh, sum of the weights in the clump graph. So we impose some extra uh, conditions on our clump graph because we, we can. So for any k colorable con connected graph of order n diameter d n minimum degree at least delta, there is a connected k color graph on the same uh, parameters diameter d and layers L0, Ld for which the following hold. Well, the first and the last layer not only has just a single color, but has only a single vertex. And if you are not talking about the very last layer, if I in the is layer, we have a single color, then in the i plus first layer, we have at most k minus one colors. This is kind of obvious because in the i plus first layer, it's the i plus first distance class. Therefore, every vertex is adjacent to a vertex in the previous class. Therefore, every vertex is of different color from the vertex it, it is adjacent to. So when there is only a single color, that color is missing from the next layer. The next one is the number of colors used in any two consecutive colors is as large as possible. Well, how large can it be? It cannot be bigger than K because the graph is K colorable. It cannot be bigger than the total num the number of the sum of the number of colors used in the two layers, because even if they are all different, you get the sum. So the minimum of these two numbers. That means that when the number of colors used in the is layer plus the number of colors used in the i plus first layer is at most k, then li and li plus one doesn't share any colors. This is a simple recoloring argument. You probably can think it through easier than I can describe it. And the last one is if we have a layer with exactly k colors, then it is not the panel, it's uh, not the last two uh, layers, and the next layer contains at least two colors. This is something that we need in some of the proofs that we have. We could prove a couple of other things too, but we haven't find use for them, so I'm not even going to bother with that. So we will say that a, a clump graph that satisfies these properties is a canonical clump graph. And for the problem that we are considering, it is enough to restrict ourselves to these graphs. And I'm going to use a linear programming approach that uses the dual. So in order to do that, I'm going to slightly rephrase my question. You can view the original question is that uh, I fix a k, the number of colors used, a delta lower bound on the minimum degree, and the number of vertices n. How big can the diameter d be? I'm going to turn this n and d around a little bit, so I fix k, the number of colors, delta, the lower bound on the minimum degree, and d, the diameter how small n the number of vertices can be such that connected k colorable graphs of order n minimum degree at least delta and diameter d exist. Well, we can rephrase it as an integer linear programming problem. Consider 
a family, the family of unweighted canonical clump -con graphs. So all the clump graphs that come from this problem that arise from uh, connected k carbon graphs with diameter exactly d and minimum degree at is delta, but forget about the weighting. How can I assign weighting to this that results in the smallest n and smallest, uh, smallest number of vertices and gives me a graph that I need? So we fix any of the uh, graphs in this uh, family and assign integer weights to all vertices. The goal is to minimize the total number of vertices to minimize the sum of the weights, subject to the condition that I assign weights in such a way that result in minimum degree delta, which means that if for any vertex uh, of the clump graph, if you add up the weights of its neighbors, it's going to be at least delta. So this corresponds to exactly to the problem I talked about. This is an integer linear programming problem. And I promise that I'm going to use the dual. So the dual is going to be flipping everything around. So let's just think about what's happening here. The constant column in this problem has all deltas. The coefficients of the weights are all ones. The matrix with which I'm multiplying the weights, well, that's going to be the adjacency matrix of my uh, canonical com graph. So when I turn this around, the constant column becomes the uh, column becomes the coefficients of the weights in the uh, function that I want to maximize. So that's going to be all deltas. The uh, constant, co the new constant column is going to be the old coefficient. So that's going to be all ones. And the new matrix is going to be the transpose of my matrix, a transpose of any decent adjacency matrix itself. So I'm going to come back to the same adjacency matrix of the same graph. So the dual problem is going to be fix a canonical com graphs, maximize delta times the sum of eights, subject to the condition that for any vertex, the sum of the weights of its neighbors is at most one. This is the dual of the previous problem. And what we can say that if you fix any k bigger than equal to three and find constants u and c such that for all d and delta and all canonical graph in the set of canonical graphs that arise from k corollable graphs of diameter d and minimum degree delta, uh, the optimum of these weighting problems of the dual problem is at least u times delta times d plus c times delta. Then for any such graph again, the diameter is at most one over u times n over delta plus some other constant c prime. And the fact that this is true is actually, actually comes from the trivial direction of the duality problem. The uh, any feasible solution for uh, the dual problem is at most, the value is at most uh, the value of any feasible so solution of the original problem. And since uh, the feasible solution of the dual problem according to our assumption is at least u times delta d plus c times delta, the number of vertices in any such graph is at least u times del delta d plus c times delta, which if you do a little algebra, gives us the theorem. So how can we use this? Using this, we can show that if G is a K colorable graph of minimum degree at least delta, then its diameter is at least three minus one over K minus one times N over delta plus big O one. So this is not exactly what we want because what we want is three minus two over K, but at least it's an upper bound in terms of K. And this is actually a new upper bound for pretty much all K, except we have proved the original condition three minus two over K, which uh, for K equals to four. And therefore as a consequence, it's two uh, for, so for four collaborative graphs. And therefore as a consequence, it's true for three collaborative graphs as well. So what do we get for free from this? We get that 
for connected free callable graphs of minimum degree, at least delta, the diameter is at, is at most three minus two over four and over delta. So we don't get anything new. We get something that's a consequence of the fact that we already know the conjecture for four callable graphs. But uh, as one over k minus one is at least a slightly bigger even than the half of two over k that we are shooting for, the improvement that we have here in the upper band is of the right order. So by the previous, if I want to show this by the previous theorem, it is enough to assign dual weight that every layer has total weight k minus one over three k minus four, and the condition that the total weight uh, of the neighborhood set of any vertex is at most one holds. So how do we do that? So we take an unweighted canonical crump graph with layers L0 up to LD. I need to assign my weights. If in the IS layer I have less than K clumps, we will distribute the total weight K minus one over three K minus four evenly amongst the vertices. So the total weight of the layer is K minus one over three K minus four. And because the number of clumps CI is at most K minus one, every vertex gets weight at least one over three K minus four, which will help us. So what if we have exactly K clumps? We can't have more because the graph is K colorable and every clump has different color. Well, I'm going to divide the vertices in the IS clump into two parts. Xi is the set of vertices that are adjacent to every vertex in the two neighboring layers and yi is the rest of the vertices. So yi contains those guys who have at least one neighbor missing from the adjacent clumps. For the vertices of xi, I assign dual weight one over three k minus four, and I'm assigning this other number to vertices of yi. I have chosen this number in such a way that vertices of yi get the same weight and the total weight in the layer is still k minus one over three k minus four. So the total weight is k minus one over three k minus four in the layer and vertices of x i get weight one over three k minus four. You should still have the question, how do I even know that this is, this is a weight? In order for this to be a weight, x i should not have all the vertices in a line. How do I know that that happens? Well, I have k clumps in this layer. If you remember from earlier, that means that the previous layer has to have at least two vertices. This K clump, this is a K color graph, has all the K colors that I can assign. So some of the vertices share color with those two vertices from before. So at least two of the vertices of this layer are not in xi. So xi is the size of xi is between zero and k minus two, which means that this num this weight that I assign to vertices of yi is actually a weight. And this also means that because k minus xi is at least two, vertices of yi get weight at least half of one over three k minus four. So in summary, what I have managed to do with this weighting, the weight of a vertex is at least one over three K minus four, unless the vertex happens to be in one of those yi's, meaning it comes from a column that has exactly K vertices, and it has at least one non-neighbor in one of the adjacent layers. Also, every vertex, regardless of where it's coming from, has weight at least half of one over three K minus four, so the total weight of any two vertices is at least one over three K minus four. And the total weight of every layer is K minus one over three K minus four. And if you remember, that's enough to prove the theorem as long as I can show that the condition holds, meaning that for any vertex, the total weight of its neighbors is at most one. So let's check that. For convenience, I'm going to set so yeah, I don't have to worry about how I describe the uh, boundary conditions. L minus the non-existence L minus one and LD plus one to be empty set. 
With this, if I take any vertex X, it's coming from a layer Li, and it has only neighbors in the I minus for the Is and the I plus first neighbor, and you can leave out X from these layers because it's in Li, and it's not its own neighbor. Well, every layer has weight at most k minus one over three k minus four, because that's what I said. So if the dual weight of x is at least one over three k minus four, then the total weight of its neighbors is at, at most three times k minus one over three k minus four, the weight of these three uh, layers together, minus the weight of x, which is at least one over three k minus four, so it's at most one. So far, so good. What if the dual weight of x is less than 1 over 3k minus 4? Well, then x comes from one of these yi's, meaning it has a non-neighbor in an adjacent layer, meaning the neighborhood set is the three layers, leaving out x and y. The total weight of x and y together is at least 1 over 3k minus 4, because the total weight of any two vertices is at least this much. And the same logic gives that, therefore, the total weight of x's neighbor is at most 1. And this finishes the proof of the theorem that I showed you. So the only thing for which we could show something new, and we haven't managed to show it because for the four global case, we can't show anything new. We know the conjecture is true, are the three colorable graphs. With a very different linear programming approach, we have managed to show that for every free colorable graph of uh, order n and minimum degree at least delta, the diameter is at most 57 over 23 n over delta plus big O1. I'm not going to show this because if you have been here last year at Ines talk, you have seen the proof and you, and this is also long and you know tedious. In addition, we showed that if the canonical graph uh, doesn't have, uh, in the canonical comp graph don't, don't have singleton layers, except for the first and last one, which are forced to be that way, then actually the diameter is three at most three minus two third n over delta plus big O one, which is the conjecture thing. This is, kind of an interesting thing, because if you remember the example that we gave, five sevenths of the columns are singleton columns. So the example that actually achieves this bound, as close as we can tell so far, has plenty of singleton layers. And I'm not aware of any example that don't have singleton layers that gets close to this bound, though there might be some. Also, just for comparison, you know, five half, which is 2.5, is the known bound that was proven. Seven third, which is 2.3333, is the conjectured bound, the conjecture constant bound. And this is somewhere in between, though, much closer to 2.5. So what's left? Well, what's left is find the maximum diameter of k gaps of order n and minimum degree at least delta, because we haven't found that we have a conjecture. Well, what can you do in this? You can create counterexamples to the new conjecture if exist, though at this point I believe they don't, but you know, I might be wrong. You can improve the existing upper bounds. We have now three minus one over k minus one times n over delta roughly. You can make better lower bound conjectures when k is odd because if they exist, because right now, they approach as delta increases uh, the conjecture bound, but for a fixed delta, they never reach it. And maybe that cannot be done. So you can prove better upper bounds in the form A times N divided by B times delta plus C. Also, if you remember, this wasn't the original problem. The original problem wasn't about k corable graphs. It was about graphs that have no larger cl click size than k. So do the same thing for the original problem. And also the examples that uh, may be sharp or we hope to be sharp are all peri periodic. 
is it true that the XM examples are all nearly periodic? So one of these periodic things or a different one, if you manage to come up with one slightly maybe modified, so it's not necessarily periodic. And that's all. I finished. Is there any question? Thanks, Ava. Let's all thank our speaker in some way, and then we'll go ahead and open it up for some questions. Do we have any questions for Ava? Oh, I put everyone asleep. <laughs> Okay, if there's no questions, thanks again, Ava, and thanks everybody for making it out. Have a good weekend, everybody. You too. Bye-bye. Uh -huh.